In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take a second look at the audio mixing room. To get to the mixing room, you simply click on the tool which has the vertical slider on the left, or you can press the F9 key. A reminder about how the mixing room works, every track that has audio, or the potential of having audio, will have a little gain control. Now, even though track number two has no audio in it, I do have a gain control for it. If it only was a video track, I would not have a control for that particular track. And this is very time sensitive. The tracks that are lit up, as it were, are active at this moment in time as I start my project because I have uh, voice, music, and audio one. If I move my time indicator over here, only two of them are working because right now the narration track, uh, the uh, voice track, is doesn't have anything to offer me at this point in time. It's blank. So only two of them are active. So it also helps you see how many uh, tracks with audio are either complementing or competing with one another at that moment in time. What I'd like to do is play this short clip and show you the problem I have. All you hear is the parade. I actually do have a narration going, and I do have a little piano theme as well, but the parade is taking all the oxygen out of the air, and that's on audio track one. Now, we could follow what we did in another exercise, which is just take this wedge tool and take the gain down of the parade, but notice it also changes the gain over here, and I may not want that to be adjusted as well. I might want to leave that where it was. So how do I just change this track? Well, we can just use the mouse and go ahead and drag down, hold, click with the left button and drag down uh, the, uh, the gain at this point in time and then do that with the other side. And we'll show you a little bit how to do that. And by the way, I need to uh, correct one thing I said. I said that once you put a, uh, a mark in here that, that controls the, the gain at that moment in time, you can't remove it. Truth is you can. All you have to do is left click on it with a mouse, drag it up away from your track, and you see it, the icon turns to a garbage can, and then let go and it will disappear. I find if I have several marks though that I have put in that I want to change, I just right click and then I can click restore to original volume level and that will give me the easiest way if I have multiple ones rather than multiple dragging of the mouse. So let's look at the, the, the control here in audio track number one. I'm going to press my home key to get to the beginning of the, the track and now we're going to, instead of using the mouse, let's use this visual control, which is really nice. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to lower it right there at the beginning. Uh, not quite to silent. Let's try 18, minus 18.4 decibels. And then I can press the end key. That will take me to the end of the track, and I will lower that uh, to the same amount. Let's see if I can get down... Uh, 18.4, or I could type it in manually. And now I've got the parade hopefully there, but maybe not quite so loud. And let's see what happens when we play that. In this example, we're attempting to do a narrative so that you can see how... I can't quite hear it, but uh, I might have overdone it, but it just shows you a way to change this track without affecting this one. So that's where that gain control is helpful. And let's take the... Uh, the music track I have here, and maybe I want to take the music down. I'll press the home key, I'll make sure I'm in the right track here. I want to click my music track, and at the beginning, we're, we're going to make this pretty, or we'll make this almost, yeah, we'll go infinity off. And notice it lowers the whole track since I don't have another number. And then I want it to slowly come in, so I'll move my time indicator, my scrubber, over a little bit. And then on the music track, I'll raise it a little bit. It will insert a what I call an audio keyframe at that point in time. And I can move it over to another location, uh, maybe here. And I can raise it a little bit more, make it a little more pronounced. 
and uh, then we go over to the the end of the narration and then I'll make it even more pronounced yet so you hear it even louder and let's see what this does as we uh, press the home key and go ahead and play. In this example, we're attempting to do a narrative so that you can see how audio mixing is required when you have audio that's being tracked. I have it too loud here, but you, you get the process. So what I have when I move off of this first section is the this parade audio is also louder. So I probably would want to go back to this location here and back it up and then uh, make a, an adjustment in the audio level. Probably uh, take the, uh, the music and lower it a little bit more than I have so far. And that might be a little more helpful for my track. But uh, if you have tracks that are you, you're trying to blend, you're trying to get a certain mood or feel or approach, uh, using these uh, mixers is sometimes more useful than using the mouse down here because it gives you a little bit more precision. And uh, we hope you find the audio mixing tool helpful. <laughs>